All right, video game fashion police officers, it's time for a pop quiz. Someone asks you to redesign a consistently unfashionable character in your fighting game. Do you A, redesign the character, or B, add more unusual accessories? Question two. Someone asks you to make the hair color more flattering for the skin tone of the character. Do you A, change the hair color to something more flattering, or B, leave in a tiny streak of the original color as a reminder of once was? If your answer was B to either of these, then you are going to have to explain this. We have with us here the first male character we've had on the show. And what better one to pick than a very outlandish fighting game character? And, you know, fighting game characters are generally a little bit more outlandish as far as their costuming goes because it really is an intrinsic part of fighting games. The movement, the design of the clothing uh, plays a, a big part in the display of, of fighting games. So this whole outfit has probably a lot more thought into it than a lot of other outfits but you have to remember sometimes that too much thought is not necessarily a good thing and here's an example i'm gonna start with the hair um first and foremost simply because warang has this uh reputation of having really bright orange hair and they've actually dialed it back which is super nice because the orange hair that he's always had, and you can see a little bit of the streak they left in, is always that sort of rusty orange color that you get when you dye really dark brown hair. So it's a little bit of like a reputation on Asian hair because you can only go lighter. And so if you're not bleaching enough, if you're not taking the proper precautions to do your hair correctly, you end up with this really ugly, brassy orange. And really, this is the color you want to avoid the most. This is something that is not the end, sh should not be the end result of your hairstyling. And the fact that there is still a streak there to give us a little reminder of how horrible that hair color is just makes it all the more horrible. Just, ugh. Okay, so, eye patch not loving. It looks like a cheap Halloween costume eye patch it has no flair or panache no embroidery around you know like the rest of his outfit i don't like it at all it's ugly you can make eye patches look cool and he did not do it then we have a metal skull necklace which is fine except you also have a chain which is attached to your jacket and here's where it gets complicated is because it's a jacket but he's wearing it like a cape and i suppose in this scenario you are you're wearing your jacket and then you have to fight and so when you throw off your jacket you don't want it to go on the floor because it's expensive it's leather i think it's got the design and you don't want to get dirt all over it so you can still flick back your coat in dramatic fashion and still have it sit on your shoulders and then it becomes a fashion accessory so i understand the the potential practicality of this my question is do you then have to wear the jacket with the chain around your neck? Or does the chain become a removable part of this outfit? And so it's it's sort of like an on-off scenario. In which case then it's no longer convenient. Because if you want to do dramatic, um, I want to wear this jacket like a cape, then you would have to buckle on these little like chain things to then like convert it to a cape but then also if you want to just wear it as a cape let's say like 
the intention is never to wear the jacket and this is just like a cape that is a jacket because look at how wide the shoulders are there's no way that you would wear this jacket around like if he actually wore the jacket his shoulders would be super puffy and like the textures obviously aren't agreeing with it either but if you look at this one right look how far the shoulder goes out and look where his actual shoulder is like you can just imagine it you can just imagine it so we have this bright blue with orange cape and the the lining is interesting maybe another ode back to his original hair color i'm not sure the jacket itself is an odd choice you don't usually see baby blue in the context of uh biker wear uh, and then we have a super super tight t-shirt it's it's really more of like a crop shirt too because it's resting quite higher than normal men's shirts do um so this is either a boy's shirt or a very very tight t-shirt and i don't have any problem with that i don't even have problem with the taekwondo like design that he has going on that's his thing it's giant and it's very messy with the rest of it especially since he also has the design on his half of an under armor sleeve and then also on the back of the jacket so it's just like a whole string of this really outdated flame style tattoo style design it honestly reminds me of of a time gone by at this point a and then we have, I guess we have a shot of his like underwear. I'm assuming that's what this is. It's like when you pull up your men's underwear and it's like you have to show the brand, I guess. And the brand in this case, I can't zoom anymore, but it looks like it says Bunting Hawk? Bunting Hawk? No, they're the same letter. Hunting Hawk is what it probably is, but that is the weirdest, most strangest H I've ever seen. Uh, and I don't even know what that means. And it's in the Irish flag colors, which is like, sure. Uh, he has those matching bracelets on both of his wrists over top of gloves, which is dumb. Because as soon as you want to take off your gloves, the bracelet is going to prevent you from taking them off. Right? Unless you can somehow sneak the gloves underneath that bracelet, but it looks like it's on there pretty tight. So it really just inhibits your ability to take off your gloves. And if you're if this is a whole biker getup, you would want to take off your gloves because they'd be sweaty and gross. And so those little uh, danglies there are holding those on. So, again, a sort of contradiction in terms of the practicality of this outfit. So then we have what appears to be at first a regular pair of jeans. Um, and, you know, nothing's wrong with the jeans. As far as the color goes, I really enjoy this color. The belt buckle is fine. It doesn't really, again, I think, go with the look at all. And it's just another added design. Sure, add another design thing. Another chain. And then we have folded, like, sort of... I guess that's a sideways pocket. Which, wouldn't, wouldn't, these, wouldn't these be the pockets here? So we have pocket, pocket, diagonal pocket. And then two zippers on the side for really like sure like they're not practical they're stylish uh and then we have noticed that the design goes in a sort of like chaps like fashion on the back but they're not are they they're not are they no 
No, that's just the style of the jeans. It's not like there's anything underneath. So this is just purely design. And I know he wears chaps normally, but they felt like they needed to include this. And not only that, is a belt buckle or like a sort of buckle thing on top. So anytime he sits down, he's going to be sitting on that buckle. And that's not going to be comfortable one bit. Uh, yeah, because the design kind of goes lower. Uh, okay. And can we go lower and zoom? No way. Okay, so we have to zoom out a little bit to get the rest of the pant. Because we have then another silver design with a skull and a flame on the bottom. On the one leg. And then my my favorite part of this outfit, which I'm still trying to figure out what this is, which it appears to be red heels that have a sort of metal spike harness on them that are in the shape of a shark and have spikes on the heels and um yeah that's just great that is that is remarkable